Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Make sure to connect on Facebook, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. If you want to support my channel, you can do so over on my Etsy shop or use my affiliate links down below. So let's get started with today's painting. So what I've got here, uh, kind of got a little bit of a head start on this, but I wanted to show you. So basically what I've done is I've taken and uh, painted in just with black here on one layer. And then uh, below it, I've added another layer for some distant trees. And then behind that, I'm painting in clouds. So I'm using my trick of using the sticker uh, brush set to a blue and a white and a gray. And as you go through, it'll it'll lay out these uh, flowers because that's the one I'm using. I've also used uh, some of the other ones there as well. But anyway, so I'm using these and I... I kind of just looking at the color and the shape of it and so what I've done here is I've laid it out and the rough shape of where I think the clouds and the sky should be now I'm about to go back over it with the palette knife and I've got the palette knife set to um, the frosted blur heavy frosted blur and so I'm gonna go back over it and shape it out this is um, recorded and I'm just playing it back so I can walk you through this because I had to keep doing this off and on throughout the day and so I wasn't able to record it while I was doing it but I wanted to show you it and kind of stop and go over different parts of it so that's what I'll do here because I thought that maybe could be a little bit more useful than just letting it play so that's what I've done here this is loaded in and I've got that laid in there so next step is to just kind of blend it all together so as you can see, I've started with the palette knife up through here, and I'm just really kind of swirling as I go in and blurring it out and letting it do. And, and if you've seen my other videos, you've seen this uh, kind of go through it. I'll try to put a link to the other one that I did that's a little bit longer. But all it is is laying these out and swirling these in. By doing it this way and paying more attention to kind of where the colors are, it gives you that really nice cloud effect. You can see how it really kind of goes through and softens everything out and just like that you've got clouds you didn't have to sit here and try and draw them you didn't have to sit here and try and uh, figure out what's where and or what you've just got a nice simple sky that's able to be created and really it takes away a lot of the frustration and aggravation from it while you're doing it this way and so it makes it really nice to do it um, you know, I kind of took my time doing this. This is sped up. It's sped up to about three times, uh, three or four times faster than what I, I spent doing it. So I did take my time a little bit with trying to play around with the, um, the painting of it. But, um, you know, that's, this is how I lay it out. This is how I like doing clouds. I can go back in later if I wanted to and highlight these and really give them some more attention. But I really wanted these to be in the background. So I'm doing the same thing here as well. I wanted to give these trees because they're on a separate layer. I created a layer over it and put it to overlay. And now I'm doing the exact same thing because I want to tint these greenish and a little bit of blue in them as well and kind of have it be in there because it's you can see how it starts making some of the ones stand out a little more here. These trees right here were painted with my vertical tree brush. That's my custom brush that I made. And you can get that in, our, in the Facebook group that I have. And over there, uh, I have a lot of different resources that I'm putting in there for the members. And you can access them and use them to paint some of your own and hopefully paint along with what I'm doing here. But again, the same thing. I've, I've got it uh, layer set up and, and done so that I have this layer first, then I have this layer, uh, and then I have the sky layer. So between these two, I've put this layer for to overlay the green and kind of... Um, you know, blend it in. To me, it gives it that really nice, soft, uh, distant mist look, which is what I wanted. I wanted this to have some atmospheric perspective so that I could play around with making the foreground a little bit brighter and a little bit um, more heavily contrast back and forth. So that's what I'm doing with it and um, just kind of, you know, laying in the color and playing around with it. If you ever watched any of the old Bob Ross stuff, Bob would take and uh, black acrylic and lay it in. And then on top of that, he would paint stuff like alizarin crimson, uh, thalo green, uh, hooker's green, ultramarine blue, and different things like that, depending on what he was doing. So this is a very similar concept. I'm just glazing these colors over top of it, and really kind of how I would do it if this were you know, a traditional paint. I would just build it in layers, except I um, 
a little bit structured would be a little different, but ideally it's the same thing and it's kind of the same theory. So I wanted to add some blue here so I can get some of that kind of uh, bluish uh, reflection from the mist and that the sky has and kind of play around with it and really get that softness to it. So that's what I'm doing now is just kind of adding it in, really making sure to blur it out and get that feel for it that I, that I like. So um, the same, th same thing that you could do. Again, we've got this layer, this color layer that's set to overlay, this layer of, of distant trees, and then the sky layer. So I um, can keep working in between them all until I get them to where I like them and then I can flatten them out. So in this, so with atmospheric perspective, one of the things I wanted to talk about here, you notice how there's trees that are softer here, and then those get a little darker, and there's some a little darker here, but yet they kind of give that impression of the distance because these are blurrier, they're softer, as stuff recedes in the background, it's going to do that. And that's kind of what we're doing here to give, start giving that illusion of distance and of just a really thick forest. So... And that's easily done with my custom brush that I created uh, using the custom brush tool. And um, then it very, based on pin pressure, it'll vary the, the uh, size of it as I go through. So it really changes up how this looks. So the, these all look like similar trees as far as uh, color, I mean, as far as shape, but they obviously look a little different. Okay, so now this is something else I wanted to explain here as well. So I wanted to overlay a little bit more color in these top trees. Problem with the overlay brush is see how, or overlay layer, is that see how this really affects this back here. This is why I've done this, these on separate layers. So what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead and just glazing in this color and softening it out and really making it so that it, it lays over top of these trees. But then once I get that done, now I'm going to have that bluish green, that kind of almost um, turquoise over my clouds. So how do I fix that? What do I do? Well, what I will do is I will actually make this layer a uh, selection. So you do that by being on this layer, holding down the control button and clicking on that layer. That in turn selects whatever is in that layer. And then I can invert it with control I and delete all the stuff that's outside of these trees and thus clean up what it is because I still, you know, it's not a big thing there, but it, to me it looks a little sloppy. So I don't want to keep it like that. So that's what I'm going to do next here in just a minute after once I get all these blended in so that I don't have these flower shapes left here uh, with everything. And so um, once I've got that done, then you'll see it select real quick and then it'll delete because I invert it and then I move on to the next step that I want to do. So now I've about got it all feathered out and softened. So um, now I can get rid of the selection. So there we go. Control, invert, delete, and then Control D to deselect. Uh, I noticed that this layer right here, there was some uh, remnants, some just kind of splotchy parts. So I did it and fixed that. Then I blended uh, or merged down that uh, layer onto those black trees. So now it came to where I wanted to uh, do this. So what I did here was I made a copy of the black foreground, as you can see here. Then I locked the um, transparency so that I could just paint all over the place with this and not worry about going past um, this. So it's kind of similar like I did this layer, but a little bit um, uh, just uh, same concept, just a different way of doing it basically is I guess what I'm trying to say. So now this brush that I have here, I'm actually using another custom brush that I made. Um, I call it my evergreen brush. And essentially what I did was I painted a shape that's very similar to the bow of, uh, of these trees, of an evergreen tree. And then I went in and did it. So once that was done and I kind of started getting the shapes that I wanted here, I then used my stencils and my soft uh, brush to start painting in some of these uh, waterfalls and just really kind of trying to get the shapes that I want and lay the play out. Now here's the nice thing. This is where it's also kind of like oil paints. This black layer that's here is a live layer. In other words, it, it's basically like I'm painting wet on wet because this layer is considered uh, active paint. So it's, it's when I put other paint on top of it, it's going to interact with it. So what I've done here, you can see I've got this really light turquoise color, but when I paint it on here with the soft brush, it blends in with that black paint, which kind of dulls it down and starts laying the foundation for 
that um, water to be there. And the same thing happened here with the trees as I was doing those. Um, and lays in that kind of that different shadowy areas and highlight areas as I continue to build it up. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm taking the stencil, playing around with how I want the water to flow, where I want rocks to be, and start kind of, um, well, really just starting kind of to sculpt it out for how I want the, it to be. So let me kind of keep moving forward here. So I have a bunch of different stencils that I've made from other drawings that I've done, uh, you know, royalty-free photos that I've found and contorted, uh, but really from paintings that I've made. This was actually from another painting I did. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm, I'm just continuing to bring in those colors and those shapes. And now that I've got the initial look of it, then I can really play around with it. So this is my reflections uh, stencil. This is basically what this stencil is when it's normal. It looks like the reflection of water going horizontal. But one of the things I love about Art Rage, I can, using the shift and control buttons pressed together, when you move left or right, you can really squish around this. So what I can take with this is start using it into a vertical form so that it breaks up the water here to make it look more like water flowing up and down. So you can really play around with stencils and get them to look a lot of different ways. So that's what I'm doing here is starting to lay in some stuff. And then there you can see where I'm laying in the, um, on the, the water on the downside. So this is one of my favorite stencils that I've ever made. Uh, just a, uh, a rock that I took a picture of and then kind of shaped it. And then I made a stencil out of it. So now what I'm doing is I've taken some of these, uh, this started originally as that same color uh, from these trees and smeared it around. Again, it's interacting with this blackish color. This isn't real completely black. This is more of a brownish black, uh, bluish black. And so it makes that brown color by smearing over top of it. So again, all I'm trying to do here is lay in where do I want rocks? Some of that's already decided by the way I laid out my waterfall. Um, but then I can go even further and start changing the design as well. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just moving this around, trying to figure out where do I like it? How do I like the highlights? I know my light source is going to be from the upper left because that's kind of dictated by this area here. And then I can start playing around with, all right, how do I want to change it to push this water back? Do I want to add more rocks here? Do I want to add more rocks down here? How do I want to play them around on here and so forth? And then I can take that same, uh, waterfall stencil and again, keep layering, keep getting textures, keep getting um, the looks and feel that I want. I can make it more dynamic by having the water run down through here. I can zoom in and, and really kind of um, break it up here and there. You notice I'm not speaking of zooming in. I'm not really zooming in a lot because I want it to be a, um, where I can see it. Now, something else I wanted to point out as well. Uh, so I'm not zooming it in because, you know, most traditional paintings are viewed from about six feet away. So that's kind of what I'm doing here, simulating that by keeping it at this level. Um, this highlight that I did right here is done with a pencil tool. So I took and selected this color and then I went to a different value range. Uh, so I can come up on the scale a little bit and I did move it a little bit over more towards orange and did the highlight to play around with it. The pencil tool works great for doing highlights like this because it keeps that rough texture and lets you just lightly sketch over it to lay in a highlight. Works really well. So that's what I'm what I've done there. And now I'm kind of going around and doing a similar thing with um, the other highlights. So I wanted to add in more foliage. So I have these different uh, stencils that I've made for foliage. And uh, again, I'm trying to leave some negative space with the black and then with the green so that it's really subtle. This tree stencil, I've gotten more use out of that tree stencil than I think really anything else. Um, again, wanting to kind of vary the foliage around a little bit. Some of this is really soft. You know, sometimes I lay stuff in because I want it to be just kind of in the background and I want to see what it looks like. And it may not even be something that you see in the, um, the final piece, but it's there. So one thing I've done here, to, so I wanted to stop this for a second to show you this. So I have a bush brush that I've made and what I'm doing is I'm laying in some areas where I want to see like flowers or foliage that sticks out because this is getting very green down through here. All of this is blue and green. And so I wanted a, a, just a good uh, bright spot of color to contrast it. So as I lay this in, uh, I realize obviously it's a little too bright 
and it's a little too solid. So what I do is I take the custom brush and the custom brush, if you go to settings and the brush designer pulls up, there's a checkbox where you can check it to make it erase the same as it. So it's the exact same brush, but it's just removing paint instead of putting it on there. And so I use that as well to kind of, to change this out. And then I also change the, uh, opacity of the layer. So you'll see that kind of happen as I go through here as well. So there's the change with it, uh, smearing it in a little bit. And then right there, that was where I used that brush to pull it back and forth. So this is really just kind of a back and forth playing with the palette knife, with the custom brush, with the racer mode, uh, deleting it out both on this layer, the layer below it. And, and mainly because I'm trying to keep that organic feel in those negative spaces. Now, what I've done here, you'll notice that I have a couple of layers set up here. One is set to overlay, which when you put a, a layer on overlay and you use a lighter color, it brightens it like sun is hitting it. The other one is on multiply, which is the layer I'm on now. So that when you use a bluish color or bluish purple, it darkens it like a shadow. And so it's an easy way to kind of play around with the highlights and the, the shadow tones. That was something I picked up from Aaron Blaze's classes. So works fantastic for that. So that's what I'm doing here. And so when I, as I put these in, I keep looking at them, trying to figure out where I want the highlights, where I want there to be, um, different sections. And so that's really what I'm considering is how do I want this to play out? How do I want this light to come through? So it occurred to me, I liked this, but I wanted to pull in more of this type of highlight here. And as I was going over stuff, you can also use the overlay overlay layer to tint things. That's what I'm doing through here as well. Um, but so I was looking at this and I said, you know, I really like this highlight here. And what if the sunlight was just streaming through and it had that real contrast of light and some of this was in shadow. So that's what I'm started thinking about as I was doing this. And cause I liked how this was playing along and giving the, you know, kind of the indication of some light hitting it. So with this stencil that I have here, I really take and twist it around and play around with it. The, as far as the, the shape of it, the size of it, the angle of it, and can take a stencil and get up just so many different uses out of it. So, I've done all that. Now, one other thing that you need to pay attention to is I just merged everything down. So basically I committed to what I had here. I liked it. I didn't want to go back and change any of this stuff here or work on the sky or anything like that. So I merged it down. I've got a layer over top of it, which lets me start building in more details. So, um, I'm kind of coming in on where I think, uh, I'm going to, try and land this painting and start putting in details. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm starting to add in with my evergreen brush and my, my bush brush, I'm adding in some different details here and there. So that's kind of what I'm doing as well and using it to change these trees. So these trees were initially laid in with stencils. Uh, so that way I can see the shape of them, but then I wanted to go in and soften it. So now I'm just taking, this is one of my, again, one of my favorite brush, uh, stencils is I use this to lay in twigs. Now I can sit here and draw these little twigs at the time where I can just lay this out, take the airbrush tool and lay in a black over top of it. And then I've got it how I want it. So it's, you know, it's again, a, a similar technique that I've used in traditional painting, but this just kind of speeds it up a little bit for me to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. So now here's the, uh, the highlights that I'm starting to put in some again, going back and forth, putting on these twigs. And to me, that's one of the things that I think really with this painting between the highlights and some of these just softer details that kind of gives you something to look at makes sense. Now I know this right here, what am I doing right there? Right? So why did I do something like that? What I did here, that by the way, is the, is the, um, uh, evergreen brush I was telling you about, but it's just with that whitish color. I decided down here, I wanted to, Usually, right, so a little bit of composition talk. So when you're doing a painting, like say this is my main area of focus, right? You can get focus by playing with value or with color to pull your eye to it. This, to me, the eye is already starting to be pulled here. So usually what I'll do with that is I'll kind of go dark on the edges to vignette it in and give the eye a place to rest. But I realized that this, this was too plain to me. I just didn't like how that went so dark so quick and was kind of there. So I decided I'm going to add in some fog to kind of mimic what's back here and tie it together. So all I'm doing here is I've laid this in going back to that same palette knife that I used on the background. And now I'm starting to, um, fade it out. So the exact same way I did the clouds, just a different study that other sticker spray. 
So it gives me a nice look. See how it's kind of playing around? The colors are, are mixing in and out. I, I just, it's one, again, not to steal a line, but a happy accident um, of how that happened. So that it just gave me those interesting colors through there. And so I took it and laid it out. Realized I didn't want it to be a big blob like this. So I use uh, Shift T for transform and then transform this layer because it is on a separate layer up here. And then uh, once I get it kind of shaped how I want it, I'm going to use the transform tool to uh, change it a little bit more and, and get it. So, um, but right now I'm just kind of playing around with the uh, blending of these colors that I'm getting here so I can get a little bit of uh, the way I like it. So that's kind of what you're seeing with that. Okay, so there we go. I did the transfer transform tool and basically squished it and pulled it out. And now I'm going back over it with the um, palette knife and softening it back out so that it gives it that more pillowy, you know, kind of drifting in kind of haze. The layer below it is that over is another overlay layer. And then there's another one here that I was playing around with the sticks and stuff. So that's what that layer is. So, um, and that's one of the things with it, you know, you can, you can have a lot of layers or you can have a few layers. I try to keep my layers usually to about four or five at the most. And I'm, then I go back and flatten it out. So I wanted to add some highlight here because this is, again, I wanted that light to look like it's streaming through every now and then. So that's what I did there was adding that in. And I wanted to push that even more and kind of play around with some of the stuff here and break this up. So I decided I'm going to add some black bushes down here to break up this water. And that's what I'm doing there. And then adding in some uh, sticks as well so that it kind of pushes all that back in the distance and then allows me to see it. So merging all layers again, decided to commit to it. I liked it. And so now I wanted to do this uh, sunbeams coming in, which if I left it like that, it would have been kind of a little too much. So I put them in here on an overlay layer, and then I've taken the palette knife and blending it out. That's just done with control, uh, holding the control button down and then pulling the uh, straight line out and it goes back and forth. So see how that, that real soft light comes across and it hits and this just sparkles now and it just gives it that really cool look. Um, so it's a great way to tie it in, but again, I wanted to have it down here too. I didn't want it to be just there. I wanted to say like, well, what if it was breaking through in a different way down here and a little bit over here, um, but yet that's still in shadow. So that's what I'm doing is kind of pushing and pulling this back and forth to get it how I like it. And so that the uh, painting really is along the lines of where I want it to be, adding some highlights here and there, and then just trying to really push it around and pull it some more. So, you know, this is, um, I think, uh, oh, this is another layer, multiply layer, adding in some shadows, because again, I wanted to push that. Added in that dark space here, and then took the palette knife and just used it over it to give those spiky edges. Again, merged all layers down, and uh, kind of got it to where I wanted. So this is basically the finished painting, and you can see how it's uh, turned out. So some other things to look at and kind of uh, zoom in on. So you can see some of the details now that we've got it. Um, it's still very painterly. You can see that there's a lot of texture here, a lot of um, uh, broken up lines and stuff like that. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want this to be you know, a photograph. I wanted to have these painterly textures for different things for your eye to look at when you look at a print of this. Um, so I have all of that in here where you can see it and take a look at it. And you can see some of the highlights here and the way they fade behind the rocks and for the shadows and so forth. So um, here's some of the waterfall edge down here and everything else. This spot is a little too bright. Um, so I'll probably go back and adjust that. That's actually in the finished piece that I have, which like I said, this is a recording that I did. And, but I have the finished piece already this bright spot wasn't there but all it's a matter of doing is just kind of going back in with that same palette knife and you can kind of blend it out and just get kind of a, a different look and feel to it you can also use to go to settings oops sorry not settings presets and use harsh chaos and it will give you the look of there being bushes down here like so 
And again, what I did earlier was that I took that airbrush and I selected what, with the, uh, the darker color and a little bit smaller brush. You can go in and do this, then go back to the palette knife and hit it like so. Fade it back. And again, it almost looks like there's some bushes back in there and it gives it that little bit of extra um, so yeah so anyway you can sit here and just kind of play around with it and see but the main thing is I'm looking for like where light shows here uh, shows here broken up by shadow and to me it made it much more interesting this has probably become one of my favorite paintings that I've done um, and hopefully you've got something out of this by me going through this and showing you how I've done it. If there are questions you have, leave them below. More than happy to answer them. I try to get back to these as fast as I can, um, within you know, usually within 24 hours at the most, uh, unless I miss one by some chance. Which if I do, sorry, I will <laughs> do my best to go back and answer it. But I hope you've gotten something out of this. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I know I'm enjoying doing these for you, and it's really pushing me to create more. So I'm going to keep working on them. If there's anything you'd like to see, I am trying to focus more on landscapes. So if there's anything you'd like to see landscape wise, um, like a little bit more on how I do the waterfalls and that kind of stuff, let me know. Um, and just, you know, leave a comment below. If you don't have art rage, you can remember down below is my affiliate link to, uh, get a full complete trial of art rage. If you buy it, I get something out of it, but, um, it helps support the channel. But as you can tell, I love Art Rage, and so that I've been recommending it for years before I ever had an affiliate link. So, um, but yeah, take a look at it. You can do everything with it. It's a complete uh, trial. You just can't save or print from it until you buy it. But it's highly uh, worth it. You know, it's it's um, to me, it's just one of the best painting programs out there for uh, desktop. So I hope you'll give it a try. I hope you'll share your artwork with me. Come over to the Facebook group, Art Lessons, and let me know uh, what you're doing. We have a little community over there that's building and growing. So I'd love for you to be a part of it. Make sure to answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, I don't let you in the group because I just assume you're a spammer. So, um, but I love having everybody there and love um, trying to answer questions and do what we can. So have a great day. Be safe. Uh, you know, love on your loved ones and just to get some painting in and relax. So I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your subscription and your support to the channel. And I just hope and pray that you have a fantastic day. Thanks so much.